Good day, my name is Kobe Saifa and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we will convert our fully functional quiz application built using JavaScript to TypeScript. In the end, we should have a TypeSafe app with improved code readability. This video serves as a follow-up to our previous tutorial where we constructed a similar quiz app utilizing JavaScript. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out that video on my channel before diving into this one. This is the video I'm talking about, this very one. We will bootstrap the application using Vite. And so visit the Vite official documentation and locate the getting started. And then depending on what you want to use, copy this code. I'm using NPM, so I'll copy this. I'll go to my terminal and I'll paste it. And then of course I'll hit enter. And then we give the project the appropriate name. I'll add TypeScript to separate it from the other project. After we hit enter. Over here, we select React. Next, we select TypeScript. And there you have it. The project has been created. And so we seed into the project. And then we launch the project in our editor. VS Code in my case. And so this is the project. After launching the project, I opened the terminal in my VS Code and then typed npm install. After, I opened index.html file and updated the project title. Because we intend to use TypeScript over here, the project directory structure has been updated accordingly. As you can see, we have a folder for the quiz component. It was the same in the previous video though. This file contains the code for our UI, what you are currently seeing in the browser. I have also updated the index.css file. This time around, instead of separating the styles, I have put everything together over here. The new things I'm introducing here is the card and its content. There is a CSS rule for the message class, and then there is one for the footer tag. Let me slowly walk you through the complete CSS code in case you want to type it. Of course, you can adjust the speed of the video and then type it. I also have the interface directory where we have defined the interface for a single quiz question. And so for each question object, we expect to have an ID, a question which will be a string. Of course, the ID is a number. The question is a string, as I said, options, an array or a list, and then the answer being a string. I also have the type folder where I have defined the type for the array of our quiz questions. If you want to use a similar data set, pause the video and then type it. Now we are back into our quiz.txs file. Let's close some of these files. We will not need them again. This is where a lot of the actions will be taking place. Over here, we will manage the state of our application using React hooks. And then, of course, we'll handle user interactions, such as user answering the questions, and then the user navigating to the next question. In the JavaScript video, we defined our state variables. There's no need for you to watch me type them here again. I'll copy them, paste them, and then update them so it becomes type C. These are the state variables we had in the JavaScript video. And so I'll just update them by adding the types. For our index state variable, we expect the type to be a number. For the current question state variable, the type will be the questions, what I showed you earlier on. It has been auto-imported, this very one. Let's change this name to quiz data so that it will be auto-imported for us. And then for the log state, our type is also expected to be a boolean or null. For our score, again, the type will be a number. For our selected answer, the type will be a string or null. For the quiz completed, our type is supposed to be, or is expected to be a boolean or null. Just like we did for the state variables, I will also copy the code for the functions or the handlers. I paste them and then we update it when necessary. And there you have it. So let's update it. We import the use effect. Over here, we update it to quiz data. We do the same here. I have added type string to the parameter passed to our first handler function. The rest, we leave it as it is. 
over here also we update it to quiz data and that is all we will do as far as the handlers are concerned let me format the code and then after we can turn our attention to the ui so far so good i think we can save the project again and it will refresh in the browser and then our ui should be up and running again once again i'll go into the javascript code copy part of the ui paste it here and then you make the necessary adjustment so there you have it i have pasted it and then let's go through the code and see the ones that needs to be updated and we update it this is very okay this is also okay and then for the another list i think we should just move the selected yes i think so and then let me close the space okay and then what else do we have what's the issue here let's adjust the disabled attribute in the button to handle undefined when the quiz completed is null What else we have here? Of course, we have the quiz data. We have to update that one. So let me just copy this one and then replace it. In fact, let me select both. Okay. Okay, awesome. Now, I think that let's change this to footer. Okay, so we can move the class because in the CSS, remember I wrote CSS rules for that. Okay, over here, I think let's add next question. Okay. And then completed instead of all done. Should we leave it? Let me just change it to completed. As if I can spell completed. My goodness. Okay, I think this is okay. Okay. Next, um, let me go through. I think that with respect to the footer, what we can do is that we can add another message to tell the user whether they have passed or failed. You understand me? Yes, I think we can update it. And uh, it will be nice. I think so. Let's do it. What we will do is that you will check if the quiz is completed. And if so, you will display a message based on the comparison between the score and half of the length of the quiz data array. Now, if the score is equal to or greater than half of the questions in the quiz, you will display a message saying, congrats, you passed, or any message you want to display. Otherwise, you will display another message saying, sorry, you failed, or any message you also want to display. What's the issue here? Maybe the spelling of our congrats is wrong. Let me add S to this. Awesome, that is it. Now, if you go into our index.css, you see that I've added CSS rules to the message class. Now, it's time for testing. And so, this is it. And, um, yes, we have our first question. Let's use the answer. I don't know. France? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Good. Next question. Um, I think next question, sorry. Then, this is, who is the all time leading in the English Premier League? I think it should be Alan. I don't know. Yes. Next question. Which player has won the, of course, this is obvious, Lionel Messi. Okay, next question. And yes, that's Lionel Messi. And then, which team has won the UEFA Champions League? Okay, okay, this is Real Madrid, of course. Of course, that's at the time I was recording this video. All this were true. Who is known as the king of dribble in soccer? This is difficult. Messi, Maradona, Pele, all these guys are dribblers. I don't know. I'm a Messi fan, so I'll go for Messi. Okay. Oops, I got it wrong. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So completed. That's the last one. As soon as you submit, the button becomes inactive. And there's our message. Congrats, you passed. Awesome. Awesome. And then the score has also been updated up there. And there you have it. We have converted our quiz application, which was earlier on written using React and JavaScript, to TypeScript. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video very helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more. See you in the next video.